Hello and welcome to Whiskey Business, our YouTube whiskey channel. I'm Levi. And I'm Evan. And I guess to start, we should probably give a little bit of context as to why we thought we should do a YouTube whiskey channel. And it really stems from the fact that Evan and I both started drinking whiskey a while ago. And when we started to drink whiskey, we found that it can be a little bit hard to get into and at times a little bit pretentious. Yeah, I would say wanky. <laughs> I mean, there was so often that you would go in, you would ask someone for help and they would just end up throwing terms at you and you'd have no idea what any of it meant. Yeah. And then you just walk away feeling more confused than when you walked into the conversation. Yeah, and we're not here to give you a glossary of terms and explain a bunch of stuff that you could easily Google yourself. But we thought we could give you, I guess, some of the finer points and, and help you avoid some of the pitfalls that we fell into, as well as just having a bit of fun and drinking some really good whiskey. Absolutely. I mean, that's it at the end of the day. We just want to drink whiskey on camera. Mm, pretty much. We like our whiskeys. We're very simple men. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a bit of context as to how we came to drinking whiskey and hopefully give you some, some cool pointers and some info about upcoming whiskey events and maybe some distilleries that you didn't know about as well. Absolutely. So let's get started. So the main reason that we started a whiskey channel was basically just so that we had an excuse to drink whiskey all Pretty the time. Pretty much, yeah. And in doing so, we decided that we're probably going to do two whiskeys per episode, mm -hmm. but we're open to, to changing that depending on how you guys feel and how mm -hmm. we feel. Um, the first one that we're going to do is Evan's choice today, mm -hmm. which is the McAllen. So yeah, I mean, let's face it, McAllen is a huge name in whiskey. Like a lot of people who you hear talking about whiskey talk about McAllen. Even on TV shows when someone is playing like a whiskey drinker, McAllen's generally the name that comes up. And there's a reason for that. Like they make good stuff. Like And, and an iconic brand. Oh, it's a really iconic brand. Um, this one is a triple cask matured. So it actually means there's three different types of whiskies matured in three different types of casks that are then brought together to create this whiskey. Some people will tell you that's not a real whiskey or real whiskey Blend should be single, single malt. malt. Yep. But no, the case is for us as well, we drink what we like. And if a blend is nicer than a single malt, I'm going to drink the blend. Like, because yeah. it comes down to what I enjoy. So we'll start with a little bit of that. Oh. Love that noise. Isn't that, it's like a great noise. sweetness that is lovely mm. so do you just want to really quickly explain when you first have a sip of a whiskey mm. what the toffs do in terms of smelling the I whiskeys mean, and getting the aromas smelling in? smelling it is supposed to show you the aromas show you what flavor profiles are in there but at the end of the day not everyone's going to taste the same thing like with food different people taste different things so you kind of have to Go with what is good for you. One thing I really love about this is the finish. Mm. Like it just, it starts so smooth, then a little bit of heat, but then it just kind of falls to the back of your throat and is just such a lovely drink. So giving it a really simple sort of breakdown mm. too, we're, we're talking about the nose, which is when you smell it, probably a little bit similar to wine, mm. the start, the flavor, and then the finish. So yeah. this one does have quite a sweet nose mm. to smell. I think it's, it smells really, really good. It's a little yeah. bit of vanilla in there for me at least. Yeah, a little bit of vanilla. Not a super aroma to no. it. It's not, not, super, it's not super strong. Yeah. Like it's not, I know it's, from my mind, it's not designed to be uh, a trendsetter. It's not designed to be first and foremost in that. It's yeah. designed to be what it is. It's just, you buy a bottle of this, you drink it, that's it. Yeah. Like it's nice, it's simple. It's not meant to challenge Sim anything. Simple is a good way to describe Sim it, I think. So let's just chuck a little bit of water in here. I don't stress too much about the super fancy water dropper. This was a gift from Evan to me. And, and the idea with the water dropper really is that a little bit of water in your whiskey can just open up the flavors and the smells mm. a little bit so that you get a little bit more of it. I'll be honest, we have no idea about the science behind this. <laughs> Not just, really. This is what we're told, so that's what we're going with. Always important after you do that, give it a little bit of a shake. Let the water really incorporate with the flavor. really brings that sweetness to the forefront it does yeah it makes it a lot sweeter yeah which is good there's nothing wrong with a sweet whiskey like Definitely one of the not. biggest things about a sweet whiskey is that it balances so nicely with the fire like and, yeah and i guess as well with whiskey you and you will when you have some 
bad whiskies or some whiskies that maybe you don't enjoy, you will find them be a little bit rough to drink yeah, as opposed yeah. to being quite smooth. And I think a sweeter whiskey, yeah. not to say that it's a difference between smooth mm. or roughness, but if it is a rough whiskey that is a bit sweeter, it can make it a bit easier to get down. I, I suppose, think. yeah, when we talk about that, I mean, between the smoothness and the roughness, what that comes down to is the alcohol content and how well that balances against the flavour. That's right. When you're having a rough whiskey, it's you, all you taste is the, the, the alcohol content, burn. that burn. Yeah. You know, that burn you feel kind of at the back of your throat and sort of stuff like that. Like when you're 15 and do your first shot of really bad tequila and oh. you sort of cough and go, Ugh. We should start a tequila channel because there's some really great tequila out there. I won't be on the tequila channel <laughs> at all. I'll get not my else. domain. Evan can start that with somebody else. Um, but when you get something smooth, what that, what that means, I guess for me, is that you can actually taste... The whiskey itself you you get some flavor you get some sweetness or some flavor profile or sort of stuff like that like i'm just a big fan of that i think that was a good purchase at the time even though i was really drunk when i bought it which is could be a bit of a mistake sometimes and not that we're going to go too heavily into mm. recommending price points or anything like that but the, the bottle of mccallum the triple cask is that was around a hundred dollars at the time which is a pretty good price point i think in general for well whiskeys. we got that was discounted because that was at Whiskey Live, Live yeah. Yeah. Um, which is an event in Melbourne. Look around in your area. I'm sure there's plenty of events for you as well. If you're in Australia, Whiskey Live does visit most of the major cities as well, which is great. Um, but we're not plugging them. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. That's right. Um, so look, for me, I think this is a really good place to start. Like it's not super expensive. I think when you look at doing a blend, there's nothing wrong with starting with blended whiskies, to be honest. You're going to start on a blended whiskey anyway. Most yeah. of the major distillers out there, Johnny Walker, Shivers Regal, uh, Dimples and sort of stuff like that, they're all blended whiskies. The difference with this is these are all Macallan whiskies. They're yeah. not coming from other distilleries. That's right. So they're all matured by Macallan just in different barrels. So you get quite a few different flavor profiles in there as well. Yeah. And I just think that is a really good place to start. I think that's just a fantastic drinking whiskey. Like it's just something you can put into a glass. Don't have to worry. Like Absolutely. You could have it neat on the rocks with a drop with a drop of water. I'd really <laughs> recommend not mixing that one if you can get away with it. Yeah. Like although it would probably be fantastic in a cocktail. I think it would. Yeah. Mm. I, I guess we like to have whiskeys that we're not mixing. Yeah. Um, we will give recommendations on some that we think would go really well in cocktails and that's they're very specific to different types of mm. cocktails as well but that um, Evan and I differ a little bit yeah. Evan always prefers his whiskeys neat I always prefer mine on the rocks mm. I just have a preference for drinking cold drinks yep. nothing wrong with either way um, mm. no matter what anyone will try and tell you that you don't drink real whiskey on the rocks you can drink it however you like just not with coke <laughs> ever under ever. any circumstance <laughs> but that one is um, yeah it's, it's interesting because I mm. think even as people that drink a lot of whiskey yeah. and like a lot of different types of whiskey yeah. that's the sort of thing that is very simple but done very well I think it's 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 inoffensive I think is the word I'd be looking for like if you look at your different types of whiskey drinkers and I mean this in a good way I don't mean this in a bad way it can have a bad connotation yeah. yeah I don't mean that it's boring like it's interesting it's got really nice flavor profiles but it's it's the, it's the kind of thing where I would always want to have a bottle of this so that when I just want a whiskey, I can just have a whiskey. Yeah. I don't have to worry about um, being adventurous. I can just have something that's kind of good. I know that comes across as me saying it's boring, but that's not what I meant. But I think as we all know too, yeah. really simple things done very, very well can often be the best. Mm. And I think that that's the best description that I have at least yeah. for that. No, for I agree on that one too. It's, It is very simple. It's... There's nothing too crazy going on. Yeah. The distillers haven't tried to do anything too nuts. No. It's just really good flavors, really easy drinking, and inoffensive, but in the way that you could probably give it to anyone and they're not going to go, yeah. not really a scotch or yeah, a Yeah, that's, Sorry, that's actually a really great introduction whiskey. If, you're, if you like whiskey or you're trying to introduce yourself or trying to introduce someone else, this is a really good place to start. Absolutely. Like, it's nice, it's smooth, it doesn't have a huge amount of heat at the back of your throat. Yeah. Um, so it's a really, really good place to start. Have that with some ice or with a drop of water and you really get a lot out of the flavour on there as well. Uh, in terms of rating, like, I I don't know how we're rating at the moment. We're still figuring a lot of stuff out here. Just off the cuff. Just off the cuff. I would probably give that maybe a seven. 
Yeah, I was yeah. thinking around a seven as yeah, well. Not, not super high. No. But it's still good. It's still something I would gladly drink. And I think it's the sort of seven where you go, that's a seven, and I think everyone's going to be there or thereabouts. It's not doing anything too nuts. And you've got to bear in mind that like to get a 10, you've got to be doing something. You've got to be really swinging oh, for God, the fences yes, and yes. really hitting it. And a lot of whiskeys will do that and miss it. And if you miss there, you're going to miss by a long, long mm. way. That is just really, really easy to drink, really lovely. Yeah. And I'd love to have a glass any day. No, me too. Um, I think if you're looking to get it, if you're not sure about buying the bottle, go try a glass. As I said, it's a Macallan 12 year triple cask matured fine oak. Definitely something you should be able to find in a good whiskey bar or even just general bars as well. Macallan tends to be something that a lot of places will have ready to go. Definitely. Um, if you do want to get a bottle, it's not a bad investment. Like even at full price in Australia, keep in mind if you're watching this in overseas, Australia is really expensive on alcohol. Definitely. <laughs> I think it's around 120, 130, which is what you pay for a good bottle of whiskey. But the benefit here is it's good. It's designed to be drunk. Yeah. I think that's, that's the best thing I have. It's designed to just be drunk. It doesn't have to be put on your shelf for ages. It's not designed to be a super high class show off bottle. It's designed for you to sit down, have a nice drink, maybe in summer. Be a good summer you definitely drink that in summer. I think the other good thing with yeah. the Macallan is, if we're talking about the whiskey crowd again, um, if you've got a bottle of Macallan sitting on your shelf at home, yeah. a whiskey drinker, a real whiskey drinker, <laughs> is probably going to think that you probably know what you're talking about yeah. as well. So. No. so that's a good place to start. So, what have you brought? So, I bought a bottle of the Hibiki Japanese Harmony. Mm -hmm. um, now, pour as I talk for this one. This is a blend of a bunch of Suntory distillery whiskey. Mm -hmm. Suntory, one of the big Japanese distillers. And if you don't yeah. know a great deal about Japanese whiskey, it's really sort of come to the fore in the last couple of years. They've won a ton of awards, World Whiskey Awards, um, Whiskey of the Year. That's basically between Suntory and... Yeah. The other Japanese distiller whose name has just escaped me. Oh God, I forgot. The Nika. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> got a bottle of it behind me, thank God. Um, and really, Japanese whiskies are renowned basically for just being really well refined, mm. super simple, but they do everything well. That's our third whiskey taster, Floki. He's, not that um, we're giving him any whiskey. Not I just want to make that clear. Not today, at least. No. He so he prefers rum. Suntory's got their two distilleries. Um, the main one that's known is Yamazaki and Osaka. This, from my half assed internet research, tells me that it's um, a little bit of a meme whiskey. It's well known in the yeah. world for being lost in translation. Bill Murray yeah. drinks it um, in that movie with the oh, wonderful there's, young there's Scar. There's a lot around there, yeah. There is, definitely. So, um, in my opinion, really simple, mm. quite elegant whiskey. Yeah. Um, tends to do everything pretty well without being a real standout in any one area. Yeah. Um, but as I said, the Japanese whiskey is just renowned for being super easy drinking, very simple, easy on the palate. Not a huge flavor yeah. profile, generally speaking. Um, and I think that's usually yeah. where this one sits. So it's yeah, it's very fruity on the nose. It is, yeah. I do like that. Again, not super bold. No, no, it's not just super enough. bold. I mean, how could you just not no. enjoy that? Like, if you don't, that's fine. But <laughs> for me, I just opinion. think... Similar to, it takes what we were saying about the Macallan to that next level. It is, it has that lovely start without too much burn and then a great finish, but it manages to be a lot more complex and it really fills the mouth. Yeah. Like, and I think that the smoothness that it has as well manages to, you're not sort of trying to rush it down. No. You can sort of get everything across every bit oh, of your tongue and that whole palate as mm. well. But and probably a little bit more viscous and a bit more syrupy. Than yeah, the yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of sits there. That's a, a better more. way of describing it. So when I say fills the mouth, that's what I mean. It's like a, it's a thicker whiskey. Yeah. So you feel it really coat the inside of your mouth, and it, the flavor stays around for a lot longer, which I really like about it. So when you want to sit down and drink a whiskey, something like that is fantastic because the flavor just sits with you for so much longer. Yeah. Like even now, I can still taste the notes and sort of stuff like that. And that's a really nice feeling. It means you can sit with one glass of this for quite a while. For quite a while. Definitely. Absolutely. Which when you consider how much whiskey costs in Australia, probably very helpful. A good thing. Yeah. Definitely. Very helpful. Um, which is good. Give that a little bit of water now too. Yeah. Just I'm just going to have one little taste before we go to the water. Go for it. Mm. It's just, 
Oh my god. I think we we sort of we cherry pick these two whiskies as well yeah. for our first episode because we you know we don't want to go with anything too sort of crazy that's you know going to upset the masses. So keeping it pretty simple, but also really good, I guess. And said earlier, doing the simple things right can make a huge huge difference Ooh, to the way that you enjoy your whiskies. And I think both of these would be pretty good. I get not as not as an entry level whiskey. They're probably a little bit more high in the price point but for that regard yeah this, someone this is an, to start. this is an entry level but if you're looking at moving up to a good level this is a great way to go this is beyond entry level because cost wise well as we just <laughs> found out yeah funny little anecdote about this I, I picked this whiskey when we decided to, to do this channel a couple of weeks ago and sort of didn't do a great deal of research into what the price point was looked it up today i remember buying a bottle of that for mm. i think about a hundred dollars yeah. a couple of years ago and you got this from the distiller in japan or this is a different one no, this is a different one. So I did just come back from Japan a couple of months ago to Nikka, which we'll, we'll do at some point mm. in the not too distant future. But this one I had, um, I had a, I had a Harmony, Harmony Masters edition of this, oh, that's right. which I, I didn't finish off um, yeah. and decided to get another bottle because this for me is just a really good staple to have in mm. a whiskey bar. But um, I guess that both of them are at that price point. It's a little bit above what you pay for a bottle of Johnny Walker Black mm. or something like that, but you can taste the difference and you can... Not that it always necessarily relates cost versus quality, but with no. these two, you are really getting pretty good bang for your buck for that sort of price, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was about $100 when I bought it, um, which to be fair was a couple of years ago now, but as we just found out, I believe this has now been discontinued. Yeah. That's what I'm reading and being told. And apparently you can now resell a full bottle of this, which I wish I'd known before I opened it a couple <laughs> of weeks ago, for about $350 or $400. So Not a bad investment if you've got one lying around that you haven't touched yet. Um, but back to the tasting, putting the water in kind of takes away the syrupiness. It really thins it out, makes it a little, makes it a lot easier to drink though, but you don't get that kind of, you're not getting the real, I guess mm. what they're really going for, which is the, no. the uniqueness and their sort of their signature for this particular yeah. blend as well. So I think for me, I would prefer that without the water or without the ice. I think yeah. the, the, the texture, the viscosity of the whiskey Gives it a difference. is better without it being kind of watered down. Like it, cause it really, I love how it sticks around in the mouth afterwards. And I think interestingly too, with the Macallan, I found that the water in the Macallan actually did open up some of those flavors and you got a bit of a different oh, context no, to the flavors whereas this i actually don't think that's opened mm. it up at all i don't think no no it hasn't really experience. done anything for the flavor for the like flavor, all yeah. it's done is make it easier to drink which is it's a good thing and a bad thing for yeah. me like it's a good thing because if i needed to hammer it down i could and i don't have to worry about feeling like the back of my mouth is on fire but at the same time if i'm drinking to enjoy it, if I'm drinking to experience the whiskey, I prefer to have it coat the inside of my mouth. I would prefer yeah. to have a sip last for, you know, a good five, four or five minutes before I need to take another sip. Well, and a hundred dollar bottle, which this yeah. was once upon a time, is probably going to equate to a 15 or $20 exactly. glass. And yeah. you're not going to want to knock those back like they're 10 no. bucks on no. ice. So, um, wouldn't mix it with anything personally. No, God, um, no. Wouldn't even do water. Even a guy that usually likes having everything on ice probably avoid the ice on that yeah. one. Um, I mean, if you're going to do it, a chilled glass might be the way to go. Chilled glass, or as we discussed earlier, neither of us big fans of whiskey rocks or whiskey stones. That might be a better thing. It Just because the ice, yeah. invariably, no matter how you do your ice, it does melt, it does mix the water, which I think for me often opens the flavor profile, but mm. does it very slowly. So if you have you know, 15, exactly. 20 minutes for a glass, it can work really well. I mean, well. a big ice block could work. Could be well, okay, yeah. Like a, one of the whiskey globes. I've got the big cubes. The problem is I don't have any glasses that the cubes fit into. Well, yeah. It was, it, that, was, it, that was a bad purchase. You go <laughs> your, your whiskey snifter sort of glass and you'll often not be able to get a big, no. big ball or a big block of ice no. into that. Um, but a chilled glass, whiskey stones if you use them. We're not fans, but we can see their yeah, usefulness. Yeah, there's a benefit for them, for sure. Um, but I... I, I still don't need that cold. Like No. And I guess for me, rating wise, um, personally, I'll probably give that an eight. I just think it's got a little bit more. I than was thinking McCallum. eight. Yeah. I still don't think it's in that nine, 10, just because it's not doing anything groundbreaking. What it's doing is it's, um, this is going to sound like a weird comparison. It's like the apple of whiskeys where instead of doing anything groundbreaking, it just takes what's out there and just does it really well. Yeah, <laughs> and there's there's a lot to be said for doing the simple things well mm. and doing the simple things like perfectly. And and mm. the Japanese whiskies, if they're renowned for anything, it is doing the simple things perfectly. Yeah, yeah, they use really nice grain. They use really nice um, uh, barrels to do it. I believe this one is a. 
I'm not going to say because I, I have no was. idea. I, we'll be honest. When it comes to barrels, like we don't tend to pay a lot of attention to that. Like, if it's interesting, we'll keep note of it. Yeah. Like, you know, when something's done in a sherry cask, sherry cask um, there used to be some great Tassie whiskies that would do a Pinot Noir cask, which I was a huge fan of. Yep. Shiraz um, cask. Shiraz cask. There's a lot of different options mm. out there. I guess the one thing that we probably should stress is that you will, you, you'll hear a lot of purists talk about the fact that you just shouldn't do anything in a bourbon cask. Yep. We don't agree. There's no. a lot of good whiskies that are done in bourbon casks. And there's a lot of bad whiskies that are done in bourbon casks. Just Absolutely. like in general, there's a lot of good whiskies and there's a lot of bad whiskies. There's a lot of middle of the road whiskies. I'm going to hazard a guess this was done in, I think, probably some, some sort of... It tastes, it tastes cask, sweet. That's usually yeah. they do yeah. the Japanese whiskies, but yeah, we could be yeah. completely wrong with that as well. Feel free to tell us in the comments. We love being totally totally wrong. That's the thing. Yeah, we do. Definitely. <laughs> but I would say if you've got some of that at home or if you've got 350 to spend and splash out, do it if you can find it cheaper even better absolutely um but this is just a hell of an experience if you ever make it over to japan you've been to the distillery itself haven't you have yep. yeah and also japanese J japanese whiskey bars incredible incredible selection a bunch of stuff that we just don't have here mm. um and if you feel like wandering around in downtown shinjuku or downtown shibuya mm. or a lot of the sort of japanese prefectures you can often find little ma and pa um, bottle shops that will just have Weird stuff you've never seen or heard of yeah. before. Um, usually pretty cheap because they are quite cheap over there. Um, you can get a bottle of the, the standard Suntory whiskey at a 7-Eleven for about 20 bucks, which is just absurd. Um, but a wonderful whiskey culture yeah. over in Japan. And they are, they're doing pretty incredible things. To no, they are. They are. It's just, it just, I mean, market. one of the biggest problems is just keeping up with the demand. Oh, um, yeah. No. The amount of stuff that you'll see that's an import from Japan that's sold out and on back orders. Yeah, yeah it's pretty wild. So. And, that's, and that's part of what leads to their price in other countries as well. It's just they can't keep up with the amount of people who yeah, want them. Definitely. So Because they're not as big as the Scotch distillers or anything like that. And McCallum can put something like that out because they've got however many pots going yeah, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of casks exactly. on a huge big property, whereas Japan doesn't doesn't have the size, doesn't no. have the manufacturing. It doesn't they, have the history. Yeah, and but they are getting bigger and bigger. Mm. And honestly, people that even purists now are starting to quite a bit come around to Japanese whiskies. There's a lot mm. of other whiskey markets which we'll get into, you know, India, Korea, a bunch of other stuff mm. that we've tried in the last yeah. few years. Even Australia is starting to get a lot more. Um, but I think even the purists that will tell you that you should only ever have mm. um, Scotch or yeah. stuff from Scotland specifically. Even they're starting to come around because you can't deny the quality of the Japanese whiskies. Mm. Okay, well, that's the end of our first episode. Um, we've had some fun. We've had some whiskey, which has been good. Really just, if you're going to spend the money on the Macallan, definitely worth picking up the triple cask matured fine oak. It's just a good basic whiskey to have sitting at home. If you see it on at any bar, have a glass of it if you haven't tried it before. It's just a fantastic thing to kind of pick up. As for the Hibiki, well, what would you say to the people who want the Hibiki, Levi? I'd say if you can find it somewhere, by all means, get a glass. If you can find it somewhere for sort of under $150, probably buy a bottle. And if you happen to have a bottle sealed at home, look to resell, because why wouldn't you cash in on that kind of an investment? <laughs> oh, I know, it would be great. But at the same time, drink it if you've got it, because it great is drop. just a really great drop of whiskey. Great for beginners and for intermediates as well, I would say, at that price point. Definitely. Probably yeah. not at that price point, actually. Not at its current kind of price point, but at its original price point, for sure. If you've sure. got it somewhere, absolutely do it. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have learned something, because that's what we're here to do. If you've got anything you'd like us to try in the future, please put it in the comments. But we are looking to do a bit more of a budget-conscious blends on our next episode to help you guys get started in the world of whiskey. But other than that, I've been Evan. I've been Lever. And thank you for watching Whiskey Business. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and show it to any of your friends who are also looking to get into whiskey. And make sure if you're doing any business that you keep it whiskey. Thanks, guys.